Hi, welcome to Singing Nomad. I'm Carla. And this week I was wondering, why do I love solo camping so much? Yes, I love nature. I love the challenge of camping. But I think my favorite part is the solo part. I like spending time alone. A lot of people do not like to be alone. Some people are even afraid of being alone. I'm an introvert and an extrovert. I guess that makes me an ambivert, but introverts really recharge when they spend some quality time alone. Extroverts seem to be the opposite. They recharge when they engage socially. So neither is wrong, it's just a personality type. And I love having that time to be introspective and just be still. You know, we can all benefit from a little bit of solitude. I'm not talking about moving to Alaska and being a hermit unless that's your thing, but we can all enjoy and benefit and learn to get still and have some time alone. One benefit of regularly experiencing some solitude is that you can check in with yourself. You can ask yourself some questions and get some insight and hopefully some clarity. You can ask what's working in my life, what's not working, we can't control others, but we can certainly control how we think. And how you think changes everything. It can change your mood, it can change your blood pressure. It's amazing the power that we have over things when we feel powerless, but we really aren't. A benefit of getting away or being alone is that you can problem solve and tap into your creativity. When I go on a trip, even if it's just to go get a haircut in another city, on the way home, something happens, and this has happened for years. I'll start to get creative and get ideas for projects and goals and the steps needed to get there. It's amazing how cathartic being alone can be. So if you're afraid of being alone, I just invite you to try it. Start slow, take baby steps, five to 10 minutes. 15 to 20, an hour. And I understand if you have responsibilities that you can't exactly do that. But there are times that those babies sleep, maybe they go to bed earlier than you, and you can have a little bit of time to yourself to contemplate. Another benefit of a long time is that we recharge and we have more to give others and I think that's always a good thing. We want to be able to give to our families, give to other people. But in order to do that, we have to take care of ourselves. I had to come inside, it was too hot. So when you're spending your time alone, try to find your joy. What is it that really gets you going? Or maybe you don't know, or maybe you like to try new things. So when I'm alone, I get ideas for this. And during the pandemic, even two years before that, I was living out the pandemic in a way, in isolation. And so I kept myself busy learning new things. You're not too old, you're not too dumb, you're not too whatever. So last year, I thought I have never had a garden in my entire life, and I'm gonna try it. I may not like it, I may be a failure, but I'm gonna do it. So on a really super blustery day, the wind was just knocking us down. I said, I'm gonna plant a garden. So I went out there, dug a little hole, put some seeds in. I thought, I, I don't know if this is how you do it, but okay. And that garden produced huge spinach heads and okra this big and this big around was amazing. And I realized eh, gardening is not for me, but I loved learning it. I love doing something new, and it's something I could do alone. I would get out there, and get my hands in the dirt, and I would pull up weeds, and it was kind of like being in a sandbox, very therapeutic, but it's not my thing. But I realized that my spouse, who knew? He loved it, so he just went with it or ran with it, so it turned out okay. You don't have to love the things that you try. You may say, eh, it's not for me, but if you can find something and just keep looking, put forth the effort, you'll be amazed at the joy and happiness that starts to come forth. And once you get some momentum with joy, sky's the limit. During 2020, I tried a plethora of things that were new. I can't tell you how exciting that was. And not one of them do I still do. <laughs> but 
I love learning and I love experiencing and it can build your confidence and it can tell you a lot about who you are. There are many things that bring me joy, but one of the biggest things that brings me joy is singing. Now this is called Singing Nomad and if you've watched my first video, you know my background. I've performed in front of people uh, all my life since a youngster and that though is not what really gets me going. I like to sing at home alone with my karaoke machine. I like to do cover tunes from the 70s when I was a teenager. And I sing things that aren't my style. I know I don't sound very good, but it doesn't matter. It's not about that. I can wake up in the most foul mood, but I can change it just like that if I'll start singing. Sometimes just a cappella without music, but I just love it and it can change my atmosphere in a moment. So even though you may not think you're a singer, you might try singing. It's a really good way of expressing yourself and it's, it's creative, it's artistic, it's fun. Try it. Some other things I've tried is baking cakes. Now I've always baked pretty well uh, cakes in big pans. I wanted to do something pretty. So for about a year, I worked really hard and I just learned. I watch tutorials and I take notes just like I'm in a classroom. And I began to make for every kid and grandkid this beautiful round pretty cake. And I did my best. I found out that is not for me. It just takes too much time and effort. But now I know that I can do it. It was a lot of fun. What brings you happiness? Where's your joy? If you haven't spent some introspective time alone, you might not know or you might have forgotten. But if you'll get still, those things will begin to surface once again. And you'll remember, hey, I used to really enjoy that. I really like that. And be on the lookout for new things. In this day and age, there's no excuse not to learn something new. It's never been easier. Another thing I like to do is to write, and I've written for years, and I really felt that I needed to write a book, maybe more than one, and it was overwhelming to me. I, I just couldn't even go there. I, I, was like, I don't know how to do that, and blah, 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 and then one day I thought, you know, I'm just going to start, and that is the thing with trying new things. The hardest part is just to start, get going, so I sat down at my laptop, and I thought, you know, hmm, how could I do this? How could, who could show me how to write a book? And I thought, I'll bet you there is an app that I can download that has templates that they've really done all the work for you. And so the other day I started my book and it made me feel fantastic. It made me feel accomplished. It gave me momentum. It helped me to think about others because the book is for others. And so even if you don't think you're worth it, which you are, what about others? Everybody has something to say. Everybody has a voice. Everybody has some influence. Everybody is good at something or several things. So think about others and your family, those around you, that you know you have more influence than you think. You impact people. So find your joy, and it is a great example for your children and grandchildren and those that are watching your life. I know that you have some undiscovered gifts within you. Gifts can be a lot of different things. One of my gifts is I'm an encourager. I can't help it. It's my MO. I can have people treat me really dishonorably and I can't help it, I'll just, I'll just encourage them anyway. Sometimes I wish I could just stop, but I like being an encourager. I like uh, pulling gifts out of people. So if you'll let me be your mama, just a minute, I wanna say you can do what you put your mind to and you can find out those hidden, dormant, undiscovered gifts within you. I just reach through that camera and I just pull out your gifts. I encourage you, you can do it. You are an individual that there is no one else in the world like. From the history of the world, there is not one person like you. And they don't have your fingerprint. You are amazing as an individual. And if you don't think you are, I just hope that you from now on, from this day forward, begin to be a fan of yourself. I'm not talking about narcissism because a lot of us are insecure and we hate ourselves. We loathe ourselves and that is so unhealthy and so unproductive and it's just a waste of 
a beautiful life. So come on, get some still time. Get some paper and pen out and figure out what you'd like to try and what you'd like to learn. Be you, don't let one person judge you for your temperament or what you like to do. You might like to hunt and fish or do hair and makeup or sew or arrange flowers. I don't know, maybe you love landscaping. Whatever it is, find it and get with it. I'd like to invite you right now to come see my spot of solitude when I'm not on the road and I'm not camping. Let's go. This is my spot. It's called the point. And it's where I like to get away and think. I'm sitting on my thinking rock right now, and it's heart shaped. I love to look at the baby calves from up here, and it's almost a panoramic view. And I enjoy being by myself sometimes, even though I'm a social creature as well. I love getting away because right now it is too hot where I am to go camping. And if I were to go to a higher elevation, such as Oregon, which were my plans, the gas prices, ah! So, mm -mm. so this is, this is my getaway, this is my solitude, this is my vacation. <laughs> I love it here, it's beautiful. Where do you go to get a little solitude? Thanks for coming with me to the point. It's awesome up here. And I hope that you have a place that you can go to get a little peace and quiet. You know, when I was a, a mom of young boys, <laughs> a single mom, sometimes I just go to the bathroom and lock the door <laughs> and just sit in there just for some peace for about 15 minutes. And it worked, it really helped. I know sometimes logistically we can't get away, but I think it's a mentality and um, I think we need to take care of ourselves really well. You know, you're worth it. You're worth taking care of. Sometimes we take care of others and we forget to take care of ourselves. So, I'm a list maker and I have some symptoms of ADHD. And so I just make a little note and I stick it on my vanity mirror and I remind myself, it says, take care of yourself. And it just reminds me, oh yeah, I check in with myself. Am I doing okay? Did I eat well today? Did I move today? Get a little exercise? Am I laughing? Listen, I make it my goal to laugh for at least a couple, three minutes. I say it's very healthy. So laughter, it can heal your soul, heals your bones. So try to find something funny. Listen, we have so much technology and social media. You'll find something that tickles your funny bone. So remember to take care of yourself. Remember to laugh. Thank you for coming with me to The Point. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for liking and subscribing. I appreciate you helping me out. Bye-bye. I don't want to get stuck up here on the mountain while it's dark. <laughs> I'm going back. Enough solitude. <laughs>